In this tutorial, we will be talking about generators. So as you know, generators is what makes the atoms move in, in a full RMC simulation. So the engine selects via a selector groups that we define in the groups section. And we saw how to do that in, the, in a previous tutorial. And every and each group has its own move generator. And by default, the move generator attributed to every newly defined group is a translation generator. But a user can specify a different type of move generators to the groups in the engine. And, and he can select from a plethora of generators that are defined in full RMC to stochastically probe the 3D space of the atoms and try to find a better position and to get the system to a better solution. So now I am logged in. I have a session running for me and I have molecular underscore THF engine loaded. So I can go now and check out the generators tab. As usual, the middle part here is the section where you will be interacting with full RMC's engine. To the right is the current state of the engine and some sort of actions. For example, here in this case, the first drop down list is the list of the available generator that are in this version of full RMC. So you have translation generator types, you have rotation generators, you have bonds and angles generators here, you have generators that will create atom swappings and you have generators that will create atoms removal from the system. We will go through each one of these and see how we can set these to the to the groups. And down below you have the list of the groups that are currently defined in the engine. So we left the engine last time with the molecular groups and we, we will go about redefining those groups to demonstrate all the generators uh, one by one. But before I do that, let me show you what the tag here is and how, how the select group works as well. So normally in the 730 groups that you have, it can be a little bit difficult to select the group you want to or the set of groups you want to, to assign a certain generator to that. So in this interface, there is an easier way to do that. So the first thing is you can tag the groups by, let me show you here first. You see here, this is the index of those groups because the tag I selected is index. So you have zero, one, two, three, but you can tag those groups using different attributes. For example, the group class. And here, all of these are groups. You remember we have two classes, we have group and empty, empty group. You can tag the groups by the group name. And this is where naming the groups becomes very handy because when you specify certain names for groups, you can tag those groups by the name and you can come here and select the avail from the available names that are in the engine. Here, we do not have that. We will, we will demonstrate it. I mean, we have it, but we only have one name. So if I click here, it will select everything. And this is not what we want. <clears throat> you can select also by the number of atoms. So here all the groups have 13 atoms because I have a unimolecular system. All, this, all the molecules are THF molecules, tetrahydrofuran. So all of them have 13 atoms. You can go and try to tag by the element composition. It's going to be all the same because I have the same molecules in this system. The element sequence. So this is a sequence in, of elements in every and each group. It starts by O, C, H, H, C, H, H, and so on and so forth. Element formula, oxygen, CH2 times four, and the same for the name. So when you select something here, when you select a, a tag, it, the, the groups will be tagged, as you can see. And instead of selecting the groups one by one here, or selecting a range of groups, if the tags make sense, you can right away select those tags here. So we, we will get to that. Let me now start by, um, I'm not gonna touch this one. Let me start by trying to, to, to set a move generator. 
So the simplest move generator is a random translation and this move generator can be applied to any group of atom because you can you can translate any group so any group of atom it can the group can have one atom or multiple atoms it doesn't matter you can you can generate a translation against those atoms the only parameter that this move generator takes is the amplitude which is the amplitude of which is the maximum amplitude of translation so if i put the mouse here it will give me the help translations amplitude maximum value or range min and max values as a list of tuple so you can say okay i want the generator to generate amplitudes between here in this case 0 and 0 0.2 it would be randomly chosen during engine runtime or you can say well no i want the generate and the the amplitude of the translations to be between one angstrom and two angstroms so by doing that i'll select a group or a list of groups doesn't matter what the groups i want to to set this generator to and i will choose between one of these three tabs that you see here in front of you so the first thing you can do is set a single generator so this by clicking this whatever generator you have for that group it will be replaced by the, gener the translation generator here and i'll do that it says generator set successfully for group zero and now the amplitude between one and two let me do it again let me go between 10 and 10 and 2 and that would raise an error it will tell me unable to perform generator limited request translation amplitude first item must be bigger than the second item check logs click ok the, those logs are coming from full rmc and it tells me what happens so between 10 and 15 and here i have one and two just check it out now i have 10 and 15. the other thing you can do those three three options here you will find in every and each move generator because a move generator can be set as a solo move generator for a group or it can be combined by other move generators and this will create a uh, move generator combinator so it's combined this generator with the rest of the group generators using a move generator combinator and what the combinator does the the for example you set to the the let's talk about this group here this group has a a translation generator let me go and try to give it another rotation generator <clears throat> so the same thing a rotation generator takes an amplitude of rotation and this is in degrees so this goes between zero and two degrees randomly i can go and set this as the move generator for the group but i can combine the rotation with the translation and what would happen at engine runtime if you have a combinator the move that would be applied to the group would be a combination of both so it would be a translation then a rotation or a rotation then a translation depending on the order of the move generators that exist of the order of the move generators in the combinator and translation then rotation is different than rotation then translation and you can even allow those orders to be shuffled randomly real time in the engine <clears throat> so let me do that now and then generator set successfully to this group and now i have a translation generator let me see what would happen now so now i have a move generator combinator and the parameters are shuffle equal false because this is not selected and the combination is a translation generator and those are the parameters and a rotation and those are the parameters so another thing you can do is to do a collection of move generator and you can keep building those up to create the most complex move generator you want so now in the, for this group i have a combination of translation and generation and, gen, and, and rotation i would like to combine this with to collect this with another rotation and let me tell you what this is so now you understand what a combination is it's a combination of all the list of generators that the combinator has a collector on the other hand would randomly select a move generator from the collection that it contains and applies 
the output of this move generator to the group. So if you have one translation, one rotation, at engine runtime, it will select one or the other. And you can specify whether you want to randomize the choice. If you don't do this, it will go in order. The first time it is called, it select the first group. The second time it's called, select the second group. The third time it's called, if you have two generators in the, in the collector, it will go back to the first group and so on and so forth. If you specify a weight, then it's a randomized choice now. And the weight of every and each move generator in, in the collector would be the probability of it being selected. So I hope my words make sense now, but if they don't, I can answer offline or you can go and read the documentation. But let me now set this move generator. So remember, this group now is, has, contains a combinator and I want to collect the combinator with another rotation and now I'll go for four, for four degrees here and I'm creating the collector and look what happens. Now the move generator of this group is a collection where the parameters randomized are true because it's checked the weight are one and one. The default value is one for every group unless you specify otherwise. Remember, I had a move generator combinator before and now this combinator has a weight of one because I didn't specify otherwise. And the added, and this combinator would be a combination of translation and rotation. And the other move generator that is in the collection of move generators of the move generator collector, <clears throat> I hope I'm making sense here, is a generation, it is a rotation generator. So at engine runtime, if the selector selects this particular group, the move generator of this particular group would be a move generator collector. The collector would, what would happen is algorithmically, the collector will randomly select between the two collected move generators in, in it. The first one is the move generator combinator. The second one is the rotation generator. If the combinator is selected, the combinator will create a move that is the combination of the translation and the rotation in it. If the rotation is selected, it will, go, it will select, it, it will perform a rotation around, uh, about this group. And I will go even more complex. Let me show you. So I will stick with this group here. Now we demonstrated the uh, translation generator. Let's go and demonstrate the translation along axes. So as the name says, it's a translation along an axis generator. Also, you specify an amplitude. You know it. I'm not going to touch it. Now you need to specify an axis, which is the vector along which the translation would happen. So let's say you ha your group is a collection of atoms in the plane, okay? And you want to try to move the plane and try to create, for example, stacking faults in your system along the x-axis. So your axis would be 1, 0, 0, or 10, 0, 0, whatever. It's going to be normalized anyway. And you can specify the direction of the translation. You can set it to true, so it will go in the positive direction of the vector false it will go in the negative direction of the vector the translations and you can set it to none which will be random the first time it would be positive the second time it would, might be positive again the third time it would be negative it doesn't matter so i will take this and look what i will do i will select the first group and i will select the other two groups here and okay now before doing that i will select the second group and i will set it and now the third group here is a translation generator. The second group is a translation along axis generator. And this one, as you know, it's a move generator collector. So I will keep this here and now I will collect this again. Collector. So this group now is still a collector. I will collect it another time and this time I'll give it a weight of 10 just to show you. And now look at this. Now this group, the group zero, let me show the indexes here so you know what I'm talking about. The group zero, index zero, is a collector and it has 
one, two, three, four move generators collected in this group. The first move generator is a move generator combinator of weight one. The second is a rotation generator of weight one. The third is a translation along axis of weight one. And the last one, the fourth one, is a translation along axis generator of weight 10. So what that would mean, the total weight is 13. The probability of the first group, of the first move generator to be selected in this, in this collection is 1 over 13. The probability of the second rotation, sorry, second generator, which is the rotation generator to be selected, is 1 over 13. And the third one is 1 over 13, and the last one is 10 over 13. So when this group is selected during engine runtime, the move generator is a collector. And since it's a collector, the probability of selecting one of these move generators from, from the collector is given by this. And depending on the move generator that is selected in this collector, the move will be performed. I can even go crazier. So now I will go translation towards axis generator. Also, you specify an amplitude. You specify an axis. Okay, and now it's not going to, give to be purely along this axis. It's going to be towards this axis within an angle of freedom. And you need to imagine this as the axis is the center of a cone where your groups will be moving along this, in, in this cone. So the further away you go, the more freedom you have to go off the axis. The closer you are to the axis, the closer you are to the origin of the vector here, the closer you get, the less leverage you have in this angle, degrees angle. So the same thing, you specify the direction if you want to. Remember here I have a collector. Now I will take this collector and I will create a combinator out of it. And look what happened. Now my move generator is a combination of two move of two of two different move generators. The first one is a collector and the second one is a translation towards axis generator. So what would happen here is when this group is selected in real time in engine in engine runtime the created move created the created move by this generator that will be applied on the atoms of the group would be a combination of, of the translation towards and whatever this collector selects from this list of generators. You can, you, using this methodology, you can create the craziest moves ever and probe the 3D space in the way you like. You can test any hypothesis you have in mind geometrically. This is very powerful if you ask me. And personally, I've never went that far, but just to show you that you can, and you can go as, go as far as you want by trying to probe the space. You can imagine any type of trajectory you want to create in, in the 3D space, and you can do it that way in full RMC. So now this is a translation. Let's go about setting translation along symmetry axis. So now it's the same thing. Instead of defining the axis manually, the axis would be defined by the symmetry axis calculated using the groups of the, or using the atoms positions of the group. So there is a little caveat here that the group needs to have more than one atom. If it has one atom, you cannot calculate symmetry axis. So let me demonstrate that now by creating different groups to demonstrate that this would fail if you give it one atom. So the groups I will be creating are, I will create a group of one atom, a group of two atoms, a group of three atoms, and a group of a one molecule and an empty group. So let me go and clear that. I will create here a group randomly group of one atom, 
I'll create a group of two atoms, zero and one. I'll create a group of three atoms, zero, one, two. All right. I will set this, see, zero, zero, one, zero, one, two. I will create a group of a molecule, a single molecule. And here to define that, I'll say sequence equal, equal one. I will add it. And I know that sequence equal one is the first molecule, is the second molecule actually. Because if it's equal, equal zero, well, I don't know. Let me see. Now I'm intrigued. Here, equal, equal zero. Add, well, it doesn't exist. By filtering by equal equal zero, it doesn't exist in the PDB file. So one was perfect. Now what I will do, I will add an empty group. And I have all what I need here to demonstrate all the move generators. Okay, so let me go here and go translation along symmetry axis. This is what it is. I want to try to set it to an atom that has one to, to a group that has one atom i want to set it it will say unable to perform generator related request at least two atoms needed in a group to perform translation along symmetry axis this is the error coming from full rmc so i need at least two create done okay the same for translation towers so the other one was along now it's towers you need to define an angle of of freedom and the same thing here, translation towards center generator. And this is a very important move generator. Let me tell you why. Because using this move generator, you can try to bring molecules to each other. You can try to dock one molecule on top of the other. You can, you can, you can allow full RMC to, to, to smartly move groups of atoms towards a center of gravity in your system. This center of gravity, let me talk about amplitude. It's, it's the amplitude like normal, like, like usual. You can set the amplitude of the move. It goes between zero and 0 0.1 randomly chosen. Now the center, it's, this time it's a dictionary and it can take, it takes one keyword. It can be fixed. So you give, you give the center as a fixed center in your system, or it can be indexes. And here, that's very important. That's very good, actually. The indexes, you will set the indexes of the atoms. Let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 30. You give the indexes of the atoms in, this, in your system towards which you want your group to move. And this center will be calculated real time at engine runtime on every run step whenever this move generator is, is called. So this center will be calculated when this move generator is called to apply a move. And the move of this group here that I will apply it to will be going towards this center. All right, with a degrees of freedom, I can always set the degrees of freedom to zero to go exactly along this direction, but that's not a good idea. So let me do that now. Create it. Done. Okay, <clears throat> so now I am moving this group towards those atoms, towards the center of those atoms, and those atoms can be moving too. And whenever they move, it doesn't matter, the center will be calculated along the way. Okay, very important. Rotation. Rotation as well is a move generator that requires more than one atom. You define the amplitude. Let me set it here for one atom. It will yell at me. You cannot rotate a single atom. It doesn't make sense. You need two atoms at least to rotate it. Okay, done. Rotation about an axis. Also, you define an axis of rotation. So here, one, zero, zero, and the rotation will be about this axis. So in, in Y and Z plane, you need to set it, done. And you can collect and combine all of these. And rotation about symmetry axis, that's the same thing. You, it calculates the symmetry axis of a group and you select which axis you want to choose, the principal, the second, and the tertiary. So the main, the second, and the third. And this will be the rotations, the symmetry axis are about which the rotation will be, will be done or performed. And you would set it, done. Again, 
orientation generator. This is another important move generator where you try to orient a group of atoms in a certain direction. This can be a very important feature when you have magnetic properties in your system, where, whatever, when you have an RNA that you want to open in a certain orientation, whatever it is. Also, you set the angle here, you set the group axis, and there are different ways where you can do that. I'm not gonna go through all the details. We don't have enough time. We can read about it in the documentation. You can set the, or the orientation axis. So this is the axis of the group. And to set it, you can even set it as fixed. Also, you, you choose an axis for the group, or you can let full RMC create the axis of the group using the symmetry uh, uh, vectors 0, 1, and 2. The same for the orientation axis. You can set it as fixed as well. And um, or, or um, and you, you choose also the flip parameter here. And that flip parameter um, tells you whether to allow flipping axis orientation or not. So going in both direction. So parallel and anti-parallel in this regard. We, we can read about it in the documentation. I'm not going to lose a lot of time here. But that's also another very important move generator. Now, the distance agitation generator. This generator will be applied to groups of two atoms, purely two atoms. And normally, this is an important move generator to assign to atoms that, that are linked by a bond. So if you have, for example, CH2O, you create two distance agitation generator between H and o, H1 and O and H2 and O, and you agitate the bond between these two. And you also specify an amplitude. You tell it whether you want the bond to shrink or not, or try both. And you set this symmetric flag which means whether to apply the same amplitude of distance on both atoms or not. <clears throat> and you select which atom you want to agitate. The first, the second, definitely not none. I think if you choose none, it will yell at you. Let me try. Yeah, it will yell at you. It will tell you you cannot take both none. You need one of them to be true at least. If I try to give it to three atoms, it will yell at me as well. It tells me I need two atoms. I'm not gonna agitate three atoms there's no bond that links the atoms in, at once. <clears throat> now, the angle agitation, it's the same. Now it takes three atoms, and logically, those three atoms need to be bonded. For example, H2O, O in the middle, OH1 is one bond, OH2 is another bond, and you want now to try to change the angle between those two bonded be between in, in, in the molecule, in the water molecule. So <clears throat> there is a rule here, which one is the left atom, which one is the second atom. The documentation will tell you that specifically. And here I have three atoms. You set an amplitude, which is an angle in this, in this example, the maximum agitation angle. So two degrees is good to try, to try to open and close by two degrees at maximum every time. You can choose whether you want to shrink it or not, or a combination of both, whether you want it symmetric and which atom you want to apply the move to. The first, the left, the right, so the left angle, the, the atoms on the left side of the angle, the right side or both. And here I set it and that's it. Now swap. <clears throat> swap position and swap centers. I will talk about swap centers. We already spoke a lot. In, in swap centers, you, or swap positions, I'm not going to argue much here, you have a group and you would try to swap it with another group. In swap positions, if you have a group of one, ang one atom, the swap length needs to be the size of that group, and the swap list needs to contain atoms in it. So let me, let me show you here how you create a swap list. <clears throat> So there is a, an extensive documentation here that tells you how to do it. 
or you can look here and see the examples. You can even specify an L a, a, a keyword and a tag or a value. The keyword would be element or name and the value would be the element, the, the value of the elements you want or the name of the atom you want. So let's say I want to try, let's say this atom here is carbon and I want to try to swap this carbon with all oxygens in the system. So I can say, well, here I want to try to swap this carbon with the oxygens. And create. Done. Those are all the oxygen indexes in the system. And at engine runtime, when this group is selected, the move generator is a swap position generator. So this, this atom here, which is the carbon in this, in this example, I'm just guessing, will be randomly swapped by any of these atoms in that list. Okay, and if that increases the, if that increase, if that decreases the error between the model and the experiment, that will be accepted. If not, that will be rejected. You can also set the list swap list using atoms indexes, as you can see here. So you have a lot of ways of doing it. Let's go about swap centers generator now. This is the same, but there is no length here that is required because a swap center it will take the group the center of that group would be calculated and it would swap it with all the swapped all the swapping list atoms one by one or they are grouped as well and we'll give you an example it will swap centers it will take the group it will swap it with the other center of the other group so let me now take for example this group here supposedly this is water molecule and I want to swap this water molecule with all carbons, element, carbon, okay? So now, <clears throat> the center of this water molecule, it will be completely translated at engine runtime with the center of one of these, which will be randomly selected. So let me also try to do with now name instead, name C1, I'm not sure if that exists. Well, it, it, let me remove this now. I have a lot here. Let me... Uh, okay. Let me do this. One, two, uh, let me do 10, 12, 13. Let me see if that's going to work. So the first group in the swap list is a group of three atoms, and the rest are single atoms. I'll set it. So... At engine runtime, if this group is selected, the move generator is a swap center generator. And supposedly this list here is selected by the swap generator. The center of those three atoms will be calculated and, and all the three atoms will be translated to the position of the center of this group. And this group will be translated, swapped, to the position of the center of, of 10, 12, and 13 here, okay? And another neat way to, to do it, let me say, okay, I want now uh, an example name H11, and I don't want them to be split in different groups. I want to, let's say this is a cluster of atoms, then I will do it like this. Let me remove these all of these. Uh, let me remove this, just so we can visualize it right here. Okay, this is not going to work because this is lowercase and I know it doesn't exist. It will tell me, well, I couldn't map name H11. So I will need to put it uppercase, create. Look at that. The first list is 12, 10, 12, 13. You have it here. The second list is all of these hydrogen 11 atoms. So if this list is selected from the swap list, the center of all of these will be calculated <coughs> and it will be swapped by the center of this group. 
Maybe this is an outrageous example. You will never do that. But this is to show you what you can do. All right, I hope I was clear enough. <clears throat> now for Atom's Remove Generator. This is a very important generator if you want to try to remove atoms from your system at engine runtime. And this requires an empty group. That's why I created it here. Let me try to set it first for a non-empty group. I, I like it to yell at me. It will say unable to perform generator related request. Non-empty group generator. So this is a not non-empty group. It has atoms. Must not be a remove generator instance. And full RMC's error is here. <clears throat> so I need to select this. Now I set it, it worked. So I have a move generator, but let me show you what this move generator is. First, you have the maximum collected parameter. So a remove generator, you can give it <clears throat> a list of atoms to try to attend removing from the system, but you want to limit the the number of collected or removed atoms. You might not want it to attempt to remove everything. Maybe the maximum can be 10 atoms, for example. So you don't want to empty your system. Sometimes if you are far enough, for, if your model is very far from, from, um, from the experimental data, or if your number density is off, you didn't set it right, you didn't have time to expand your system and set it right, uh, remo a remove generator will do a lot of damage. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use it at the beginning of your simulation. You should use it an, a, as an advanced stage. It's like an atomic bomb. You should use it at the end. When you, you, you don't have any option anymore, you create a new frame. So you do, not, you do not damage what you have. You create a new frame and you attend removing atoms in this frame. Because once you remove the atom out, the, 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 the ability to put it back in full RMC is not, is not enabled yet for a lot of physical issues. When you remove an atom, the space will be filled back, so it would be very hard to find a place where you can put it back. So the, the, the implementation is not the problem. The problem is the space that would be occupied by other atoms and it's not worth trying anymore so <clears throat> you set the maximum collected atoms allowed and you specify a list of atoms to attempt 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 removing when you say none when you when you set it to none the engine will will then all atoms in the system will be used as atoms to be removed. And at engine runtime, the atoms remove generator will attempt removing one atom at a time. Okay, so let me say here, also I can specify, I want to attempt to remove element hydrogen. So let's say I have long carbon chains and some of them get ionized. Or let me say, okay, let me be more specific. Let me say name hydrogen 1 1. I know that hydrogen 1 1 and name hydrogen 1 2. I, I know that those can get ionized, can, can, can leave the molecule and the molecule will be ionized. So I will attempt removing those. I will let full RMC attempt removing those during engine runtime. Create. All right. And this is now the list of atoms that this remove generator will attempt randomly selecting during engine runtime to remove some of these atoms from the system. So it's similar to removing a, a, a hydrogen atom from, um, <clears throat> let's say you have a molecule of uh, HCl and you want to remove the chloride from it. That's how you do it. You want to attempt having free H plus in your solution. That's how you do it. You put HCl molecules all over the place and you start, you allow for RMC to remove chlorine from it. Okay. So I think I exhausted all that I have here. I will finish this tutorial by saying um, 
that you can do a lot using those move generators and you can drive any kind or any kind of geometric moves you can you, you can allow your groups to move in any geometric way you like you can even swap to create um, um, you, to, to create uh, 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 to create faults in your in, in your crystalline system for example you can remove atoms to create voids you can orient molecules you can rotate molecules you can do a lot so I will finish here and good luck.